Chapter 3, What God Is Having established that consciousness is, the next step is to prove that consciousness is all that is meant by the word God. If it can be shown that whatever consciousness is, that also is what God is, then we have identified consciousness as synonymous with God and can proceed from that basis. A Christian science class is for the sole purpose of establishing the truth of Christian science from one's own understanding. Each one must draw his own conclusions spontaneously without the aid of any outside source. The real purpose of a textbook. One is not made a Christian scientist by the Bible or by science and health. These books can no more make a Christian scientist than a treatise on mathematics can make a mathematician. The purpose of any textbook is to take the student to the source from which it came itself. In communion with that source, the student discovers for himself what the textbook on the subject declares to be true. In exactly the same way, the Bible and science and health have one purpose as textbooks, to take the reader to truth as the source from which these books came. Thus, the Bible and science and health become to him the records of truth. They are the charts, so to speak, which the wise traveler frequently consults in checking his course of thinking to see whether or not he is on the right path. Just as the navigator checks the position of his ship by constant comparison with his chart. No wise Christian scientist would imagine that he could dispense with his charts, the Bible and science and health. This does not mean that the Christian scientist relies upon them for his understanding. He does not, because his understanding is based on that which he knows through his communion with the infinite knower, with that which is mind. Definition of God if you were asked to define exactly what you mean by the combination of letters G-O-D, I believe you would unhesitatingly answer by using the very terms Mrs. Eddy has used to define the word in the best possible way. Quote, God is incorporeal, divine, supreme, infinite mind, spirit, soul, principle, life, truth, love, end quote. Taken together, these words express in large measure what is generally meant by the word God. So, if it can be satisfactorily proved that consciousness, which you have already established as is, means all that these words mean, then it follows that consciousness is God. The little word is may properly be called the most powerful word in the English language. When a fact or truth is established as is, it is in its final form. It is impossible to go beyond that. 
when you have arrived at the is of anything, you have arrived at the truth of it, and there is nothing further to be attained. Knowing this, you declare with absolute assurance that that which is, is therefore all that is. There is nothing and can be nothing outside of that which is. Anything outside of is becomes is not. Therefore, that which is, is all there is. It is well here to repeat that before using a word, you must define to yourself its exact meaning. If a word has not a clearly defined meaning, that word is inert, and your thought can receive no impulse from it. To employ words that are vague in meaning to you is futile. Such a practice is based on the erroneous belief rebuked by Jesus when he said, For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. Shakespeare discerned this futility of mere words when he said, Words without thoughts never to heaven go. It is not the word, but the thought back of it that counts. Children wonderfully illustrate this truth. Often they use words that sound ludicrous to adults, but the power of deeds is in their meaning. Isaiah said, a little child shall lead them. Analyze every word carefully, for only to the degree that it defines God to you does a word have value. As previously stated, you will find that the simplest words give the most direct and forceful impulse to thought. Endeavor to think in the simplest language. Then the words you use will instantaneously convey to you their full import. Thus, your words may be few, but they will be to the point and your understanding will be correspondingly enhanced. In analyzing words in Christian science, it is imperative to bear in mind that you have begun your structure without a single element of materiality, with just your own consciously being. From that, you have proved by induction that consciousness is. In that consciousness, there is no element of materiality, even as there is none in pure mathematics. Mathematics is the supreme term in the science of numbers, including within itself all that relates to numbers. In like manner, consciousness is the supreme term in metaphysics, including within itself all that relates to being. On this basis, let us analyze the following words from Mrs. Eddy's definition of God. Incorporeal. Incorporeal means without a material body. The dictionary defines it as without matter. Both terms mean without limitation or finiteness. In this sense, it is immediately obvious that that which is, is incorporeal, because incorporeal means without limitation, boundless, 
hence, can have nothing outside itself. That which is, being all that is, having nothing outside itself, is necessarily incorporeal. Therefore, consciousness, being that which is, is incorporeal. Divine. Divine means holy, pure. Holy implies completeness, holiness, or wholeness, without blemish. In other words, nothing apart from itself. There can be no holiness without wholeness. One is synonymous with the other, since both mean wholeness and therefore isness, or that which is. Consciousness, being that which is, is therefore divine. Considering divine from the standpoint of pure, there is no purity, no pureness, with the slightest extraneous element present. Pure means absolute oneness, absolute aloneness. And because that which is, is all that is, it necessarily is one, alone, and must be purity itself. Hence, it is divine. Therefore, again, consciousness, being that which is, is divine. Supreme. Supreme is an all-embracing term. It is not to be limited to the sense of possessing more power or authority than something else. It is a term that admits of no comparison, for there is nothing apart from it with which to compare it. It implies greatest, in the sense of being all-inclusive, the final authority over all, the author of all, from which all proceeds. Does not that which is head over all include within itself all? And is not that all that which is? Consciousness, being that which is, is therefore supreme. Infinite. Obviously, Infinite must mean without boundary, finiteness, or end, without limitation of any kind. The very word at once conveys the concept, without beginning and without end. What is it that alone is without beginning and without end? Is it not that which you have found to be isness, or is embracing within itself all? Hence, consciousness being is must be infinite. Mind. Mind is that which thinks, the subject of all conscious state or consciousness. That which thinks is that which knows. To know is to possess the truth or fact. In other words, to know is to have that which is. Therefore, consciousness being that which is, is mind. There can be no thinking without knowing. For thinking ceases at once to be thinking 
unless it is based on knowing, based on that which is fact. Admittedly, much is called thinking that is not based on fact and only passes for thinking because of ignorance. In certain well-defined cases, however, where it is seen to be based upon palpable absurdity, it is called no thinking. In other words, insanity. The time is not far distant when nothing will be called thinking that is not based on reality, mind, that which is. When that time comes, all the foolish beliefs of materiality based on human hypotheses will be seen as insane beliefs and not as real thinking. Mrs. Eddy foresaw this when she wrote, quote, No human hypotheses, whether in philosophy, medicine, or religion, can survive the wreck of time. But whatever is of God hath life abiding in it, and ultimately will be known as self-evident truth, as demonstrable as mathematics." End quote. Spirit. Spirit is a word readily understood, for even in its commonest use, it means essence. In speaking of the spirit of a thing, do you not mean the very pith of it, the very essence or is of it? By spirits of camphor or spirits of ammonia, you mean pure camphor or pure ammonia, the essence. In other words, your use of the word spirit always means essence, isness, that which is. Essence is derived from the Latin esse, to be. Being and essence are one and the same thing. Consciousness is spirit because consciousness is that which is, is essence, isness, all that is. This completeness is its oneness. It falls that all that is synonymous with is, is one. Therefore, spirit is one. Soul. The word soul implies spirituality in contradistinction to corporeality. Immateriality opposed to materiality. Carrying it still further, it means the vital principle, the essence, the heart, the substance, as in the phrase, soul of honor, meaning the very essence or substance of honor, honorableness itself. In short, Soul signifies the spiritual nature, the innermost being, the very isness. Consciousness, the innermost being, the isness, is soul. Principle. The word principle is derived from the Latin principium, a beginning. Principle means law, basis, origin, foundation, fundamental truth or source, 
the animating, governing influence. Law means right. Right means fact, that which is. Law is the basic animation of being. Therefore, all action is the action of law, the emanation of principle, harmonious and perfect. Basis means isness, that which is. Origin means source, derivation, with nothing prior to it, which in turn means is, all that is, nothing beside it, the one principle. Foundation, that on which all rests, must be isness, being. All that is, is the one foundation, the one basis. In Christian science, there must be a strict differentiation between the words principle, A-L, and principle, L-E. Principle, A-L, means chief or head in authority, whereas principle, L-E, is the fundamental basis of being, that which governs, not as a head or chieftain governing others, but as self-contained power, including all within itself, the essence, the basic isness. Principle is a word that must be used in its exact sense in order to carry thought instantly back to is where it is found synonymous with consciousness. Consciousness is principle. Life. Life means self-existent being, which in turn means existence, or that which is. Consciousness being that which is, is life. Truth. Truth is reality. Truth is just what is. To establish the truth of anything, you find the fact about it. You discover the is of it. There is nothing further to find beyond that which is. For that which is must always be the fact. Is not this the is that is consciousness? Therefore, consciousness is truth. Love. Love is a word that people delight to use. Volumes have been written about it. But have not all these writings been based on the human concept of love rather than on John's concept, quote, God is love, end quote, meaning thereby that spirit is love? Love, to be love, must always be the same, having no variableness, neither shadow of turning, no personality in the sense of limitation attached to it. If these qualities are not present when the word is used, it is not love. Love is consummation, completeness. It implies beauty, order, perfection, and rightness. With a single element or quality missing, the loveliness would be marred 
and incomplete. There is but one word that expresses all that is implied by the word love, and that word is, is. You have already proved is to be synonymous with incorporeality, divinity, supremacy, infinity, mind, spirit, soul, principle, life, and truth. Do not these mean love? No human sense of love, because of its finiteness, enters the precincts of love. Human sense too often demands exclusive possession, exaltation of what is one's own to the elimination of others. Frequently, it is the butcher fattening the lamb to slay it. The butcher tenderly guards his lamb, allowing nothing to harm it. For what end? To slay it for the purpose of enriching himself. Is this consideration for the lamb, this tenderness, love? Or is it a parody on love? When you declare that God is love, you are not thinking in terms of your own enrichment. You mean that he is love because that infinite is, that is God, embraces all that is. In that enfoldment is the eternal care and protection of all. If love is not, as it were, the two times two that remains always four, it is not love, but human belief. This so-called love is a butcher fattening the lamb to slay it. Human belief and opinion enter not the domain of love. The metaphysician uses love as the all-inclusive word wherewith to sum up his various definitions for that which is. Love is the generic term for God. Reason reveals God to you as life, truth, all-inclusive good. But only as this revelation triumphs in experience do you understand God as love. Mind, wisdom, intelligence, bestowing itself upon its idea, is love. In the last analysis, experience alone defines love. It is beyond the reach of words. When Jesus drove the money changers out of the temple, was he not giving one of the clearest examples of what God as love really means and is? He showed that greed, selfishness, and the gathering to oneself of materiality had no place in his father's house, in real being. Then did not Jesus, in what he did, illustrate the real action of God as love? Love never condones evil. It is the law of extermination to all unlike itself. Jesus again illustrated the same thought when he said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Peter's offense 
was his human sense of love, attempting to dissuade Jesus from suffering the experience of the crucifixion. The human sense is never the true sense. The human sense of love and finiteness is frequently the farthest from the divine. Mrs. Eddy says, quote, The divine significance of love is distorted into human qualities, which in their human abandon become jealousy and hate. End quote. In the foregoing analyses, you have proved that the words which Mrs. Eddy used to define God are all synonymous with the word consciousness because they all signify that which is. Therefore, the inevitable conclusion must be that consciousness is God. Countless other words can be and are used to mean God. In fact, every word must finally be brought to truth and so found one with that which is. The true meaning of every word is essential to metaphysical thinking. As he which hath called you is holy, whole, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Continuing a further analysis of words, substance. By substance is meant reality. It is derived from the Latin sub, under, sto, I stand. That which stands under, supports, maintains, in other words, isness, or that which is. That which is being consciousness, consciousness is substance. Intelligence. Intelligence is knowing. You mean by it what you mean by the word mind. If there is no knowing, you say there is no intelligence, no mind. Mind you have already found means consciousness. Therefore, consciousness is intelligence. Law. Law means established fact, that which is right the ever-changeless, the fundamental basis, principle, without which nothing can proceed or operate. That which is, or consciousness, is the fundamental basis of reality, that from which all proceeds. Therefore, law is a synonym for consciousness. Father. Father means originator, that from which something is derived. Hence the expression, the wish is father to the thought, the father of it. Thus, father means the essence or origin. Hence, father and consciousness are synonymous. Furthermore, Consciousness is the only Father, the infinite Father. The One is, precluding any lesser sense of Father. Quote, Call no man your Father upon the earth, for One is your Father, which is in heaven. End quote. Mother no word implies a deeper sense of love and tenderness than the word mother. 
Mother means that which enfolds and cherishes. To enfold is to shut in or embrace. That which is shuts in or embraces all, since there is nothing outside of is. It bestows its own qualities, cherishing and comforting by imparting its own insistent goodness and tenderness. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you. No word more completely expresses isness, or that from which all derives, than this word, mother. Necessity is the mother of invention, illustrates this. Here it means origin or impulsion, that which is. Consciousness, as that which is, is the infinite mother. Brother, this word indicates a sense of nearness, relationship, comradeship. Is not comradeship unity of purpose, oneness with truth, identification with that which is. For whomsoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. End quote. Sister. Sister means one of the same quality or condition. It is the quality which never forsakes, is always present alongside. Is not that which is, being all that is, always present at one side, the one and only sister? Husband. Husband means that which completes, protects, shelters, is faithful. That which is, being all that is, includes all, and so is the one completeness, precluding all unlike itself, and so protecting and sheltering its own integrity. Husband is always present unchanging and ever faithful. Quote, and I will betroth thee unto me forever. End quote. Husband provides, because that which is, being all that is, is the one infinite provider. The Bible says, quote, for thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. End quote. Wife. Wife indicates companionship, understanding, comfort. That which is, being all that is, is infinite companionship. The one companion the one understanding, the one comfort, and therefore the one wife. Wife also denotes pure and true devotion. Again, returning to that which is, is it not pure, knowing nothing outside of itself, absorbed in its own isness? the supreme devotion. That which is, is always identical with itself, always singly true to itself, true to one. The Bible repeatedly uses the term harlot, meaning an adulterous wife, 
to characterize the children of Israel when they became disobedient to principle. It is used to describe the type of thinking that departs from the oneness of truth, from isness. The true wife is portrayed thus, quote, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. End quote. Child. By child is meant innocence, simplicity, spiritual receptivity, that which is, being one, is innocent of anything outside itself. In short, it is that which is, consciousness, the one innocence, the one simplicity, the one receptivity. Hence, all the child there is. Of such is the kingdom of heaven. Neighbor. Neighbor is that which is close to one, a friend. Quote, Love thy neighbor as thyself. End quote. The Bible speaks of a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. A friend seeks not his own, but another's good. That which is, being and having all, seeks nothing for itself, but holds to itself all that is. Hence, sticketh closer than a brother. Consciousness, therefore, is the one neighbor the one friend. <clears throat> Marriage. Marriage is union, a joining together, oneness. Quote, Marriage should signify a union of hearts. End quote. That which is, being all that is, joins and holds together all that is real in the perpetual oneness of its infinity. Then, marriage is the ever-presence of the one mind, the complete oneness of principle and idea, consciousness and what it is conscious of. This one marriage appears as God always appears, in the language each one can best understand, whether called single blessedness or as two walking hand in hand. Regardless of the appearance of God, he is all to every appearance and must be so acknowledged. Quote, what therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. End quote. And again, they shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. Consciousness, 
as all that is, is true marriage. Divorce. Separation. That which is spontaneously excludes, separates from itself, all unlike itself. That which is, therefore, acts as the law of divorcement to everything unlike good, and thus meets every necessity for happiness and harmony. Quote, Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. End quote. The living of this truth would establish the joy, fullness, and permanency of every marriage. Relative. The terms usually classified under this heading need to be understood. The consciousness that is, being all, must be the only relationship there is. How else could it be all in all? Hence, it is all the relative there is. Thus, quote, God is our Father and our Mother, our Minister and the Great Physician. He is man's only real relative on earth and in heaven. End quote. All these words, which you have analyzed and shown to be what consciousness is, lead to but one conclusion, namely, that consciousness is God. Therefore, you have the witness within yourself that God is. Because you know consciousness is, or you could not consciously be. And you now know what God is. Knowing is understanding and interpreting is. This knowing cannot be an impression received from outside, but is rather a conviction from within. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You alone can say what a word means to you. You must derive every word from that which you know mind is, and keep every word in perpetual oneness with the basis of your conscious being. Quote, every human thought must turn instinctively to the divine mind as its sole center and intelligence. End quote. Every word must be taken back to is, where it is found to be one with consciousness, mind, truth. This analysis of words is the very structure of consistent thinking. Knowing can be arrived at in no other way. It is the basis of everything. It is absolute consistency, self-contained and self-perpetuated. It never deviates from itself. It expresses no quality opposed to itself. Its purity, its confidence, and its might are the purity, confidence, and might of your thinking. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. Having established that God is all in all, the infinite one, 
you have proved him to be that which is, and all that is. Thus, you have left nothing but God with whom to deal. Let us here consider three words often used with reference to God. Omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence. Because these all-inclusive terms express the thought contained in numerous biblical passages. Omnipotence. Unlimited power, all the power there is, the Almighty. Consciousness, being all the is there is, leaves nothing apart from itself to dispute its power and authority. It is, therefore, all the power there is. Consciousness is God. Hence, God is all the power there is, the one omnipotence, the Almighty. Omniscience, all-knowing, all-wisdom, all-intelligence. That which is, being all the is there is, is all the knowing, all the wisdom, all the intelligence there is, hence the one omniscience. Omnipresence is, by its very nature, is the all-presence, filling immensity, there is no conceivable place where it is not. Then God, the one consciousness, the one is, is the one omnipresence. Caution is necessary in the use of the noun omnipotence as distinguished from the adjective omnipotent. The adjective form suggests a comparison. Omnipotent might be thought of as the most powerful of lesser powers. The noun gives the more spontaneous metaphysical sense of the allness of mind, God, without any suggestion of something apart from him. The same differentiation should be made, of course, in respect to the words omnipresence and omnipresent, omniscience and omniscient. In the final analysis, every term means exactly what every other term means. So while the terms we have been considering are called the synonyms for God, there is no actual difference between them and what are called the attributive qualities of God. It is, however, in the attributive qualities that we gain an even larger sense of God. The metaphysician must learn that every word shows forth the all in all of God. This proof must be so convincing that not a doubt or question remains. There can be no secret closet in thought where some word can hide from the light of understanding and escape its rightful classification as being one with the common denominator. When correctly analyzed, there is no word that can imply the existence of something apart from is, that can imply evil, lack of intelligence, or materiality. 
let us examine some of the words used as attributes of God. First, we will consider words that we are in the habit of associating with God. Then we will take up some that, at first thought, we might hesitate to apply to him, but which, in the light of what we have just been proving, will be seen to be, nonetheless, the very essence of his infinite nature. Justice is easily recognized as a quality of God. Justice means exact rightness, impartiality, that which is, just is. Just is is not a play upon words, because that which is, being all that is, is just isness all the time, and therefore an attributive quality of God. In the Bible we read, Thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful. Does God pardon sin? Can perfection countenance a defect? Can truth tolerate a falsehood? Truth makes the lie tolerable only by declaring the fact, the is, about it. By reversing the negation, nothing of the lie remains. This is the true pardon, not a pardon, but the universal law of divine pardon, the destruction of evil. Quote, When we understand that God is what the scriptures have declared, namely, life, truth, and love, we shall learn to reach heaven through principle instead of a pardon. And this will make us honest and laborious, knowing that we shall receive only what we have earned. End quote. That which is, mind God, is ever itself, infinite goodness, ever ready to impart itself, and so is gracious even as the sun imparts its own warmth and light. The mercy of God lies in keeping that which is inviolate. There is no mercy in the passing over of a mistake and leaving it uncorrected. As long as five, as the product of two times two, appears in a problem, It is not merciful to ignore it. The mercy consists in correcting the error by showing forth the truth of which the error is the negation. Principle never forgives in the sense of overlooking. The mercy of mind is the utter annihilation of everything unlike good. Goodness is another word readily attributed to God. Goodness means everything exactly right and true, that which is. That which is, being all that is, must be consciousness itself, God the true goodness. Unless words are correctly defined, the Bible will not be understood. Furthermore, if there were any word that could not be found to be one with God in its true meaning, then God would be dethroned and would not be all in all. The fact must be faced honestly and fearlessly that there is no word that cannot be satisfactorily carried back to mind 
and they're found to exemplify what Jesus meant when he said, Let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. By this, he did not mean yes, yes, and no, no, as though having no mind of one's own. He meant to understand right as right and wrong as wrong, to emphasize the necessity of standing always on the side of right and of refuting the wrong. Such standing verifies Paul's assertion that our conversation is in heaven. Let us now analyze a few of the biblical terms used as attributes of God, but which in common usage are likely to denote the reverse of godliness. Jealousy. I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Could this God that we have established as absolutely all there is be jealous? Jealousy, in its ultimate meaning, is that which tolerates no rival, no presence aside from its own. Is not this the definition of is? Is, by its very nature of being all that is, holds within itself all that is and becomes a law of annihilation to everything apart from itself. There could be no greater jealousy than this. For example, the businessman, jealous of his neighbor's business, would, if possible, annihilate or appropriate that business and keep his own business as the only one. The nature of jealousy is ever the same, excluding from its presence all but itself. The true sense of jealousy, as the law of exclusion to everything unlike good, is the spontaneous destroyer of that false jealousy which thinks in terms of something apart from itself something over there to be jealous of or about. The jealousy that is the presence of God can have no jealousy of something apart from itself. It is jealous only of its own infinite isness and maintains that oneness inviolate. On the contrary, the human sense of jealousy envisages something apart from itself, something to be jealous of. The understanding of God as the one jealous God, that isness, that is all that is, annihilates the human concept of jealousy by supplying its own perfect completeness. The word lust is one that in ordinary usage has many meanings. There is every sort of lust, including the lust for money, the lust for position, the lust of the flesh, and so forth. Lust signifies a reaching out for completeness. In its rightful signification, it is the law of mind, the consciousness that that which is, being all, holds all to itself, hence is completely satisfied. The desire of our soul is to thy name and to the remembrance of thee. Lusting after righteousness is true lusting, 
It is the consciousness of having all. All lust, whether for money, power, position, or of the flesh, is the belief of incompleteness, which spontaneously vanishes before the realization that that which is, is all, has all, and is omnipresent. Christian science, by translating all terms into their rightful meanings, never leaves a lack or a vacuum. It never leaves anything outside the kingdom of heaven. Christian science takes away only the false sense, leaving that which is as all that is. Another expression familiar to readers of the Bible is the anger of the Lord. Anger annihilates, whenever possible, that with which it is angry. Quote, So that in the day of the Lord's anger, none escaped nor remained. End quote. Anger is never directed against that which is like itself, but at that which is unlike or contrary to itself. Even the human concept of anger, if given free reign, would utterly destroy that with which it is angry. Anger, analyzed to its ultimate, is the destruction of all unlike itself. There cannot be a little anger or a little jealousy it is the one anger, the one jealousy, and that one infinite, knowing nothing but its own isness, utterly annihilating everything unlike itself. That which is, being all that is, is the law of annihilation to everything unlike itself. This is the anger of the Lord. This true sense of anger destroys the false sense. Quote, the hand of the Lord was against them to destroy them from among the host until they were consumed. End quote. It is vitally important for the metaphysician to analyze every word to its final signification. Then only does the limited and mistaken human sense disappear and the true sense reveal itself. The Bible repeatedly refers to God as a God of destruction. To destroy is to kill to wipe out, to murder. Therefore, it follows that God must be a murderous God. Because of the usual meaning attached to the word murder, it may, on first thought, sound sacrilegious to speak of God as a murderous God but the sacrilegious sense disappears when it is seen that God could not remain God unless he were the exterminator of everything unlike himself. This is the most perfect form of murder conceivable. Quote, Truth, life, and love are a law of annihilation to everything unlike themselves, because they declare nothing except God. End quote. Only as this one true murderer is seen as omnipresent 
will everything that is unlike good vanish. Not only will the desire to murder disappear, but even the ability to destroy in a harmful sense will disappear. There remains but the consciousness that knows only itself and the things of itself. The consciousness that alone can and does so exalt thought that it is conscious only of the presence of good. There is no word, no matter how objectionable the human sense of it may be, that when carried to its ultimate, into the kingdom of heaven, does not signify the presence of God. Remember, quote, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. End quote. Jesus undoubtedly meant by this that every word must be found as belonging to God, as of him, and therefore as one with him. Only as this understanding of words obtains will you be justified, and your words be not idle. Failure to do this will leave you holding to something outside of that allness that constitutes isness God, and so will you be condemned. What does the word hell mean? Utter confusion, distress, disaster. It is synonymous with devil or evil. You must take even this word into the kingdom of heaven, or you will harbor something as consciousness that is apart from mind and which would destroy mind as all in all. Hell, devil, evil, carried to their final meaning, denote utter chaos. Is, being all that is, is the law of utter chaos, the total annihilator of anything apart from itself, even as mathematics is chaos, utter elimination to everything unmathematical. This true sense of hell immediately releases the bondage of finity with all its burden of misery and unhappiness called hell, devil, evil. These words, in their true sense, are found as the very essence of mind. And when present in that sense, as your mind, they spontaneously destroy all that is unlike good. Do not be afraid to look dispassionately at any word. Instead of stamping it as evil, and so implying something that is not wholly good, which can come to as your consciousness, carry the meaning through to its ultimate sense and find it as communion with mind. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, unto the final discernment of the rightness of all things, which includes the right definition of words. Such words as bandit and robber are words in common vogue. But are these words thought of in their true sense? so that every atom of fear in connection with them is wiped out? 
a robber or a bandit, is one who appropriates unto himself that which seems to belong to another. Multiply this process of appropriation to infinity, and it is seen that God appropriates to himself everything. Is, being all, appropriates all to itself, not by taking something from another, but by the supreme consciousness of its own allness. Because it is all, it has all. Would not the so-called finite sense, referred to as a bandit or robber, disappear instantly under this realization, quote, Son, all that I have is thine, end quote. Finding himself in possession of all, what would there be left to steal? Having the multiplication table, who would try to steal his neighbors or even imagine that he could? Failure. Is it impossible to find failure as one with mind? Two times two being four spells utter failure to the ignorance that accepts two times two as five. It causes the ignorance to vanish. Infinite good, as all in all, is complete failure or annihilation to everything apart from itself. Ignorance is that which knows not. Infinite intelligence is infinitely ignorant of evil. Knowing only good, its ignorance of evil is absolute. Not knowing evil, it is the law of destruction to evil, destruction to the ignorance of good. Oneness with infinite intelligence as the only mind destroys the human sense of ignorance by becoming ignorant to ignorance, not knowing ignorance. In thus analyzing terms, it is imperative to remind ourselves constantly how, quote, entirely separate from the belief and dream of material living is the life divine, end quote. In other words, how entirely separate from the belief of the material concept of any word is the divine reality of it. No word as you have seen, is too insignificant or too hateful to be taken into the kingdom of heaven. Because it is a word coming to you as consciousness, giving impulse to your thought, you must find it one with consciousness, one with God as all in all. You cannot escape the responsibility of establishing for yourself that which is, as all that is. It is the self-evident induction from your own consciously being. You are compelled to follow through. As Isaiah said, quote, Go through, go through the gates. Lift up a standard for the people. End quote. This standard is the standard of understanding, which must be lifted up at every point of experience, whether that experience seems to come as a word, a person, 
a place or a thing, or whether it is termed a thought. No matter how presented, every concept must be taken into the kingdom of heaven. Quote, Science, understood, translates matter into mind, rejects all other theories of causation, restores the spiritual and original meaning of the scriptures. It is religion's new tongue. It gives God's infinite meaning to mankind, healing the sick, casting out evil, and raising the spiritually dead. End quote. Everything unlike good thus spontaneously disappears. It is not. Each step taken by the Christian scientist in his search for truth becomes a fact that he will under no circumstances give up, for he knows that to do so would undermine the integrity of his reasoning and nullify his conclusions. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. So in giving definitions of words, do it with such a scientific sincerity of purpose that the true replaces the false as your conscious conviction. Then spontaneously your thinking will be based upon truth. Quote, the new tongue is the spiritual meaning as opposed to the material. It is the language of soul instead of the senses. It translates matter into its original language, which is mind, and gives the spiritual instead of the material signification. End quote. The spiritualization of word and thought is of paramount importance in metaphysics. Without it, vital right thinking is impossible. It is the essence of Christian science with which can be discerned the spiritual fact of whatever the material senses behold, the basis of immortality. Thought must turn from theology to Christian science. Otherwise, your study of the Bible will engender a sentimental hypocrisy which attributes both a true and a false quality to the same object. In other words, good God and good devil. Doth a fountain send forth at the same time sweet water and bitter? This sort of sentimental thinking in mathematics would declare at one time that two times two is four, and at another that it is five, without being disturbed by the discrepancy. But a genuinely scientific mathematician would bring to bear what in Bible language would be termed the fury of the Lord and would utterly destroy the false, not with any morbid human emotion, but with the irresistible logic of pure reason. The foregoing analysis of words indicates the work that lies before the metaphysician. He must constantly be bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And he must also drive home continuously and with renewed conviction the truth that, quote, the only logical conclusion 
is that all is mind and its manifestation. From the rolling of the worlds in the most subtle ether to a potato patch. End quote. <laughs> 